Welcome to the Kronos video training for self-service scheduling. This video will take approximately 30 minutes to complete. By the end of this training you should be familiar with self-service scheduling, navigating your schedule and calendar, viewing supporting information for your department, how to self-schedule, swap a shift and request time off. And lastly understand the approval process. What is employee self-service? The process where employees submit schedule-related requests and manage their schedule using the employee calendar in Workforce Scheduler. Some of the benefits of employee self-service include being able to view and manage your schedule quickly and easily. To act upon schedule-related alerts, such as open or closed submission periods. You can filter scheduling information that you want to see such as holidays and scheduled shifts. You can also view and sign up for scheduled shifts that are available as well as a scheduled shifts that you are qualified to work. The employee calendar allows you to see who else is scheduled to work in your location or which employees might be able to cover your scheduled shift. You can view coverage information that shows if there is under or over coverage in your department. Lastly you can submit schedule requests online and track the status of those requests in one place. There are several ways to log into Kronos. Look for the Kronos icon on your desktop. There is also a Kronos link on CareWeb, under Applications on the right hand menu. Lastly. You can bookmark this direct link. Click the link below and bookmark the link in your browser. When done, return to this training and click continue. Log into Kronos with your link blue ID and password and press enter on the keyboard or click the sign in button. If you have issues logging in please contact the service desk at 323-8586. In this slide we will discuss the basic navigation and components of your Kronos homepage. The active bar displays the active workspace tabs. If you have multiple tabs, click the secondary tabs to bring that workspace forward. It is important to always use the sign out function to log out of Kronos. Using the X and closing the window will not properly log you out. By not using the proper sign out process you can cause system slowness. The carousel located in the upper right corner contains other workspaces if available. The workspace area displays one or more widgets and the related items pane. Widgets are task tools or views. There are one or two primary widgets depending on your workspace that allow you to perform tasks. There could also be secondary smaller widgets that allow you to view information until you swap them into a primary position. The related items pane on the far right includes one or more additional widgets for less common tasks. The support tabs located at the bottom of the workspace contain additional information about you or your department. We will now walk you through navigating your calendar. Section A is the field that display the default time period. You can select other time periods from the pull-down list or use the calendar button to select a specific date or date range. The icons in Section B are your day-week-month views. These buttons let you view your time and schedule data in different formats. In Section C you can use the arrow buttons to move between time periods. You can also use the visibility filter represented by the letter D to choose what schedule items you want to see. The Section E buttons are your employee self-service buttons. These buttons allow you to perform self-service tasks such as time off requests and shift swaps. The More button contains all request types that you can submit for the selected time period. Last the request status row displays your scheduling requests for the selected time periods with icons that provide visual status information. This next slide shows you how to view schedule information. Section A is your visibility filter controls. You can filter the types of items that are displayed in the calendar. You may have access to all or some of these options, 
Schedule requests, with selections for statuses, available open shifts, holidays, vacation and sick leave, or scheduled shifts. Section B is your calendar. Within the calendar, your schedule time is blocked out. A blue block indicates a scheduled shift. Shift details appear inside the block. A green block indicates a scheduled leave time, such as vacation time. Holiday, sick leave start time and duration appear inside the block. A red bar at the top of a date column indicates available open shifts that you are qualified to work. In Section C, you will see Department Schedule, Accrual and Coverage tabs. In this slide we will discuss the components of your department schedule. The Department Schedule tab is a support tab located at the bottom of your calendar and shows the schedule for your department. Section A is your location. Select the location whose schedule you want to view. Locations where you are eligible to work appear in the list. Section B is a job filter. Use this list to filter on the jobs you want to see. All jobs for the location appear by default. Section C allows you to toggle between displaying shift times or shift labels. Section D allows you to toggle between viewing entire shifts or separate lines for each segment in a multi segment shift. E is your refresh button. F is a checkbox that allows you to filter out unscheduled employees from the department schedule. Click the column headings to sort the schedule either alphabetically by employee or by job. Lastly, transfer icons like an example H indicate transfers in or out. An arrow pointing left indicates a transfer in and an arrow pointing right indicates a transfer out of the selected location. Double arrows represent a swap. We will now explain the components of the, the Coverage tab. The Coverage tab is a support tab located at the bottom of your calendar and shows the coverage for your department. Section A is the location and job for which you want to view coverage data. Your primary job and any jobs that are scheduled in the selected location appear in this list, including those that you are ineligible to work. Section B is a zone filter. You can filter on the time grain for which you want to view coverage data. Section C is the refresh button so that you can retrieve the most recent coverage data. Lastly, the D items are coverage indicators. Each cell under a date shows the scheduled number of employees for each selected zone on that date. Blank or no arrow indicates coverage is met. A red down arrow is under coverage and a blue up arrow means over coverage. In the next several slides we will talk about different schedule requests. It is important to make sure you have the right time period selected before requesting a schedule change or time off request. To do this either select a pre-configured time period from the pull down list or click the calendar icon and enter the applicable date range into the start date and end date fields. In this slide you will learn how to submit a self-schedule request. You can use the My Calendar widget to assemble your own schedule during the shift sign up period. Remember to check and or change your time period first before creating a request. Then select the More button and from the pull-down menu select Request Self-Schedule. A grid appears that shows the available shifts that you could work. Review the available shifts along with Supports tabs located at the bottom to help you determine the shifts you would like to work. The Schedule grid contains several features that make it easier to select the shifts that you want to work. You can move between weeks in a multi-week schedule period using the navigation arrows. View shifts by shift times or shift labels. Click the sort icon to sort shifts for a specific day in various ways, such as by start time, duration, or label. Available shifts that are in your primary job and scheduling location are grouped together under the primary heading. If your organization chooses to display shifts for other jobs or locations that you can work in, those locations and jobs appear under the transfer heading. Select the radio button to the left of the shift you would like to work. As you select shifts, 
They appear in orange text under My Schedule at the bottom of the grid. Select the radio button again if you would like to unselect the item if you have selected it by mistake. Note, you can only select a single shift for a particular day. If you want to work multiple shifts in a day, you need to submit multiple requests. Once you have the shift selected click Submit. There is also an option to save your request as draft. This allows you to save what you have selected and come back at a later date to change and or submit your request. The shifts that you signed up for appear in your calendar and the request status is approved. Please be aware that the approval is subject to change until the final schedule is posted. In the next section, we will discuss how to request a shift swap but first some things you need to remember. Before requesting a swap shift, please view your department schedule first to determine potential swap candidates. You can verbally check with the person you would like to swap shifts with before requesting as a common courtesy but the system will automatically notify and request approval from the employee upon submitting the request. The swap will then go to the manager in Kronos for approval. Once the manager approves a shift swap, it will change in real time on the schedule. With swap shifts, you need to select the date on your calendar when you cannot work your scheduled shift first before creating the request. To request a swap, remember to click the calendar day first. Notice it turns orange when it is selected. Click the More button in the upper right corner of your calendar and select Request Shift Swap from the menu. In the Request Shift Swap dialog box, first check to ensure that the date on which you want to swap is listed. If the date is incorrect, you can select the calendar icon to choose the needed date, if necessary. In the Type field, ensure that the applicable request type appears. In this example, the name of the request type is Shift Swap. In the Time field, ensure that the start and end times appear for the shift that you cannot work. If you are scheduled for multiple shifts on that day, select the shift that you cannot work. Confirm the shift information in the box under these fields. In the Swap It section, click the calendar icon, and select the date when you want to work. You can also use the pull-down menus in this section to sort and filter on either locations or jobs for which you want to view potential employees for your swap. Review the list of available swap candidates, and select the employee by clicking the radio button next to their name. Enter an explanation in the Notes field, if needed. Click Submit. Note, after you submit the request. The employee to whom you offered the swap receives a notification message in his or her Kronos inbox about the request. The message contains specific information about the swap and prompts the employee to accept or refuse the request from his or her employee calendar. You can determine the status of your request by hovering on the request to view a pop-up message that shows the current status. When the request is approved by the manager, the schedule change appears in your calendar and the request status is updated to approved. You can use the My Calendar widget to request time off for vacation, sick time, or personal time. You first need to choose the time period that includes the first and last dates of your time off request. For a single day, these dates are the same. You can either select a pre-configured time period from the drop-down list or click the calendar icon and enter the applicable date range into the start date and end date fields, and then click OK. Before requesting leave, it is important to check your department schedule and coverage tabs to determine the impact of your taking time off. Select the Request Time Off button in the upper right of your calendar. Select the type of leave you are requesting. Your choices are employee vacation request, holiday off request or off day request. Depending on the request type you select, the fields will update on the form for the specific needs of the request. In this example we are using the vacation request. Use the calendar icons to select the applicable start and end dates of the request. 
From the Pay Code drop-down list, select the pay code that you want to use for the selected date range. From the Duration drop-down list, select the applicable duration of the request. Full Day or Hours If you selected the Full Day Duration option, enter the start time of the time of request. If you selected the Hours Duration option, enter the number of hours you are taking off in the length field. Click Add another time off period if you want to include additional non-consecutive days off, pay codes, or durations in this request. Use the accruals on drop-down list to select the first date of your first time off request, and review your accruals to ensure that you have accrued enough time to cover the time off requests. The Notes field is available if you would like to add notes for your manager but they are not required. If you are ready to submit your request for approval, click the Submit button. If you are not ready to submit your request you can save as draft. The draft function allows you to just save your request so that you can come back later to make edits and submit when ready. Once submitted, the leave will populate on your calendar. If you hover over the request with your mouse, a pop-up box will appear showing the approval status. If you need to cancel or retract your request you can do so very easily from your calendar. Retract is used for unapproved items and cancel is used for approved items. Please note that these steps can be used on all your requests such as self-scheduling, schedule swaps, time off requests. Locate the item you want to retract and or cancel in your calendar. Hover over the item in your calendar and click the blue circle with the right pointing arrow. Select Retract or Cancel depending on the status. In this example we are only showing the Retract screen but the Cancel screen is practically identical. If you want to enter a note to your manager on why you are retracting or cancelling your request, you can but it is not required. Click the Submit button when finished. We will now discuss the approval process in Kronos. Once you have submitted your time off request they will go to your manager in Kronos for approval. The manager will either approve or refuse your time off request in Kronos. When you hover over your request in your calendar the pop-up will show the status of the request, like approved or refused. Below you will find links to instructional documents for the items we have discussed in this training as well as additional documents you may find useful. Please use the links to access the documents for printing or bookmarking. Click the continue button when finished. Thank you for watching. You have now finished the web-based training for Chrono Self-Scheduling.